obviously a great football game. Um, hats off to North Carolina. You know, they, they competed, they played hard, and, and at the end of the day, they made more plays than we did uh, and came away with the win. And so hats off to them and, and much respect to their program tonight and what they did. Um, thank you to everybody who came out. Uh, that was an amazing atmosphere for Duke football. Uh, you know, sorry we couldn't get it done. Um, certainly inspired our kids, though. Uh, and I thought we battled. I told our kids, you know, couldn't be more proud with the way we battled. Uh, we knew we were going to have to. We knew it was going to be that kind of game where we were just going to have to keep trying to make plays to keep up with them. Um, and I thought for the most part we did. And then, you know, the final, you know, the final sequence of plays on offense just was a killer, you know, and to push us back and turn that into a long field goal and, you know, we just gotta, gotta figure out a way to be better at that situation. Um, you know, we hit some lulls in the third quarter, but but aside from that, I thought our offense executed exactly how we needed to all night to give us a chance. Uh, and I thought our defensive kids battled. I mean, they battled against an extremely explosive, potent offense, and um, you know we were there. We were there and had a chance to win, and we just didn't make the play at the end to get it done. And so um, we'll go back to work and, and get ourselves ready and go down to Miami and, and play the next game. So questions. Can you give us a feeling on how how Bird does in the locker room? Are they more disappointed or her or uh, just what did you see from Mr. Fitzpatrick? Yeah, they're, they're really disappointed. I mean, they just played a game all the way down to the fourth quarter against the rival and lost it on the last play. So yeah, they're, they're really hurting right now. You mentioned those goals in the third quarter. It felt like your offense was operating pretty efficiently in the first half. What did you and team defense do to kind of fix the problem? Yeah, I, they changed some things up at halftime with some of the d things they were doing movement-wise up front. And um, you know, we, we missed a couple blocks and it just got us behind the chains. And, and then we got ourselves a little bit off kilter. Um, you know, so it was really back to back drives in the third quarter that we just, um, you know, had a couple couple plays early in the sequence that just got us really behind the chains and it was hard to overcome. And then, you know, I thought we made really good adjustments on the sideline and were able to come back and, and do some things in the fourth quarter to give us a chance to win. Pass interference. What made your running game so successful tonight? 297 yards. Yeah, I mean, obviously, Riley was a big part of it. Uh, we were able to hit some chunk plays. Um, that helped. I thought we got a lot of explosives going in the run game. Um, you know, and, and, you know, we knew that was going to be something. You know, we, we had to try to play ball control a little bit. We had to try to keep the game tempo in our favor. Um, and so we challenged our guys to go out there and do that. And, you know, they responded and they did it. What made your offense? Yeah, I mean, he's been doing that all year. I mean, he's he's been that guard all year, and Jack Burns has played a lot of center for us. And, you know, what it did was it just – it forced guys maybe to play a few more snaps without Mo being in tonight because um, we didn't have the rotation that we've been able to have. And, you know, Justin Pickett's stepping up and is, is going to get himself in position to be that next guy. But um, I think we just probably had to go a little bit longer um, with the group of five that we went with. And so it was a group that played a lot together that way. So we weren't really – um, concerned about their ability to operate. You know, they've done it a lot this year. So, um, yeah, and obviously Jacob's, Jacob's a phenomenal player. I thought he played his real rear end off of tonight. Obviously a lot happened in the second half, but that last Carolina drive when they marched down the field right before halftime, what kind of impact did that have on the game, do you think? Yeah, I mean, I thought it was huge. I mean, and, and you know, that was – we knew that was going to be our challenge, you know. Um, you know, their, their skill kids are, are talented. Um, you know, we pr tried to play a little bit more of a – of a soft coverage in that drive um, to try to keep the ball in front of us because we didn't want to give up a big one. And, and unfortunately, we still gave up one over the top of us. You know, he pump faked and went back down the sideline and hit a big one. And I think that's why they were able to turn that into a touchdown. I think if we'd have kept the ball in front of us, we'd have been able to hold it to a field goal and go in at halftime up eight. That was kind of what we were um, trying to get accomplished there. Um, and then I think in the last drive, you know, we, we were a lot more aggressive. We blitzed them pretty much the whole drive. And, um, you know, he just he got out of there and made some people miss and made some plays. And obviously that last touchdown was a, was a tremendous play by their quarterback. You know, he beat an unblocked blitzer. Um, they probably would have ended the game and got out. And right before he went out of bounds, threw the ball into the end zone. So hats off to him. It was a great play. Did the official give you an explanation on the touchdown play where he may have gone out of bounds and come back in? Yeah, they just – I mean, that, that was close. That, that was – you know, I certainly understood where that came from. I mean, it was – whether he did or he didn't, that was so close. You knew that they weren't going to be able to overturn that. Did you get explanations on the illegal shift and the chop block? Yeah, I mean, the, 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 so the illegal shift was on us. We, we, didn't, we didn't get set. Um, we, didn't, we should have gave the kid a second to get set, and we didn't. Um, the post-chop was, 
you know, it was really a bang bang play. So the running back had the blitzer, so he went to chop him, which is what we want to do. And what happened is Dre Harris, this guy went so far down inside that he kind of peeled back. And as, as the chop happened, he just kind of peeled back and put his right hand on him. So, um, yeah, I think it was a post chop. I, I, I do. Uh, you know, I don't know. It was just one of those things that, that happened. Um, I don't know that, that anyone did something we didn't coach. It just kind of happened and, and obviously happened at the worst time because um, I think that obviously changes the impact of the game quite a bit. I'm sorry about that. I know it comes down to turnovers and execution, but is there something maybe looking back at this week of preparation you wish you maybe focused on more, have the team focus on more? No, I mean, we, we just, you know, again, when two really good teams play each other, um, people are going to make plays. And, and, you know, we made ours and we got a post chop, you know, kind of a bang, bang post chop. Uh, they made theirs and won the game, you know, and so we made as many plays as they did. Um, they made a lot. We made a lot. Um, you know, unfortunately, you know, something happened on ours. You know, we go up 11 right there. I think it's a different game. And, and you know, again, it's just something that happens. It's a bang, bang play. But, you know, we made the same play um, that they made to win the game. You know, we, we executed a throw and a catch in a tight window down in the red, down in the end zone. And, you know, unfortunately, we just, you know, we didn't execute the protection the right way. That second offensive drive, you got to have that, that turnover on down. What made you feel like going for it on fourth down was the right play instead of taking just their offense, you know, we, we were going to be aggressive and that was one of those analytics situations where it was, um, we knew we had to try to get touchdowns in the red zone. Um, that was going to be a key factor in the game. We knew field goals weren't going to be enough to beat those guys. And so it was a fourth and one. We felt like we had a good play um, and we just didn't execute it. Was Tony Davis on the field like an injury or something? Yeah, I don't know what happened to Speedy. Something, something I, I just kind of heard on the headsets at the start of the second half that Speedy was, was out with Tony Young. And so um, I don't know. I have to get a little bit of clarification from the trainers on exactly why he was out. But yeah, that, that happened right at the beginning of the second half. We just kind of got that over the headsets, and then that thrust Tony into action. You scored three straight touchdowns between the end of the first half and the start of the second half. What is it? How proud of you are to be of the defense? Are you of them you know, kind of buckling in and giving you a chance to win? Yeah, I, I mean, and I just said this on the radio, and I'm going to say this in front of the cameras too. Like at, at some point. I don't mean this in any kind of bad way, but like we have to stop questioning whether this team's going to respond. This team is going to fight. They're going to fight for four quarters. Uh, they continue to show it every single week. Um, and so, you know, we went through a stretch where we didn't play real well on offense. We didn't play real well on defense, but, you know, nobody blinks. Um, you know, they know they're going to keep coming. They know that's what this team is built on. Um, they know that's what they've trained for. Um, there's a lot of love in that locker room for each other and for this program and for Duke football. Uh, and they continue to go out and show that every week. And so, yeah, I mean, yeah, proud of them, yeah, but certainly expected them to go out and, and more proud that they were able to execute plays and have success, right? That's, that's probably more what I'm proud of. How does it feel knowing that your first year as a head coach that you made this team such a huge game? And I know it's, a, it's always a big deal, the victory bell battle, but it was such an incredible game. And fans, no matter, I mean, the result, Everyone was able to enjoy that. Yeah, I mean, I told the kids, I mean, obviously, you know, I'm so proud of what they're doing. Um, and and they, they've got to continue to do it to get us over the hump. You know, there's there's a handful of plays that we're looking at every game. The reason why, you know, the win-loss column isn't isn't going where it needs to go. And, and it starts with me. And, and I've got to do a better job of getting them prepared. And we've got to do a better job coaching them. And they've got to do a better job executing. But, um, you know, I don't think it can be lost on anyone how far this program has come in a very short period of time. I don't think it can be lost on anyone what this team looks like right now when they take the football field. And I hope that our fans see that. I hope our student body sees that. I hope the people around this program see that, um, that now's the right time to jump on board and be part of these things because these kids deserve it. Uh, night game under the lights, uh, fans were loud into it. How would you describe the atmosphere tonight? Yeah, I thought it was great. I mean, I thought it was everything that we hope Duke football can become. Um, and, and you know, obviously, um, we didn't get the result that we wanted. Um, but I think hopefully people enjoyed the experience. I think they got glimpses of what we're capable of becoming. Um, we're going to continue to work to make sure that we get the results that we want. Uh, and we're just going to keep going. And that's what this program is going to be about. You've been pretty candid discussing the mistakes the penalty came to it. The personal foul when Dwayne and Jamie appeared to have a sack on May in the third quarter was a huge play. What did you what did you see? Yeah, I just it's it's getting hard. I mean, it's getting hard. I mean, the Drake May six four two twenty, um, and so you know they say we slung them down, but 
Like, I don't, I don't know. He's 6'4", 220. We have to be able to tackle him. He's not a little kid. Um, and so it's just, it's, you're seeing it, you see it in the NFL, you're seeing it in college. It's just, it's getting really hard um, with the way they're protecting the quarterbacks on some of these plays. You know, he's got him down around the waist and he's tackling him. Um, and Dwayne's 290 pounds and Der Drake's 220. So I don't know what they want us to do. And then on the next two possessions, they throw a flag to rub in the pass and they pick it up. Yeah, I, I don't know about that one. I just. Thank you, guys. Yep, thanks, guys. Appreciate you.